Okay. Um. <coughs> so we're gonna start off by having Lindsay read this quote. By Thomas is not Many years ago, I read the following Associated Press Dispatch, which appeared in the newspaper. An elderly man dislocated at, disclosed at the funeral of his brother, with whom he had shared from early manhood, a small one-room cabin near um, Canestio, New York, that following, that following a quarrel, they had divided the room in half with the chalk line, and neither had crossed the line or spoken a word to the other since that day, 62 years before. Just think of the consequence of that anger. What a tragedy. <coughs> okay. Um, what experience or blessings might individuals miss out on when they maintain grudges? Carla, yeah. what do you think? Um, can you repeat the question? What experiences or blessings might individuals miss out on when they maintain grudges? A lot. Like what though, specifically? <laughs> um, I don't know. Well, like for example, my, I have a brother who in 1997 fought with my sister and since then they haven't talked to each other or gotten to know any of their kids or anything. So they both have five kids. So those cousins have never met and they've never been to Christmas together or Thanksgiving or nothing. It's been like, it's been over 20 years, almost 20 years. Let him tell it again, I'm doing it. Okay. Um, so yeah, they would miss out on like knowing each other's families. So I think. Take a picture. Alright, so unless it pertains to Jacob and if you remember his situation, George, can you remind us what the situation was for Jacob? What was Jacob doing for the past 20 years, and who has he not met in 20 years? He's um, his brother. Uh, why? What happened? He got in a fight. He was afraid of what his yep. brother he was going to do. Mm -hmm. What did Esau say he would do to him? Uh, kill him. And... Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. All right. Can we read Genesis chapter 27, verse 41, 43? Um, Ian, can you read 41? Ramina, read 42. And Carla, read 43. 27? Yeah. What was that again? Genesis chapter 27, verses 41, 43. Aren't we almost in 32? Yeah, yeah, but they do. It's part of the list. Yeah, it's me. When Esau hated Jacob, oh, and Esau hated Jacob because of the blessings wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of, the, of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. <coughs> and these words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rebekah. And she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said unto him, Behold thy brother Esau, as touching thee. Doth comfort himself, <laughs> proposing to kill him. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice, and arise, flee thou to Laban, my brother, to Herod. Okay. Um, now I'm going to go on to Genesis 33. That was kind of a recap of what happened. Uh, we're going to read 1 through 11. So, Lindsay, can you read one and two? 
Uh, George, can you read three and four? Sure. KU, five and six. Um, from here, yeah. seven and eight. And I need someone to read nine, ten in the lottery. Carl, I don't know where I'm going. Genesis, Genesis 33. 33. That's the lesson? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's the chapter, yeah. Okay, and then what? what um, Verse 1 and 2. Oh, what? what? Genesis 33? Yeah. Oh, okay. Here. Okay. Okay. 1 and 2? Yeah. Okay. And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, Esau came, and with him four hundred men. He divided the children unto Leah, and unto Rachel, and unto the two handmaids. And he put the handmaids and their children foremost, and Leah and her children after, and, and Rachel and Joseph hinder most. <clears throat> and he passed over, over before them, and bowed him to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. <clears throat> and Ezua, so, so and he ran to meet him, and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him and he wept. And Isa ran to meet him and embraced um, him. Five, five, five and six. <laughs> wow. Sad. And he lifted up his eyes and saw the woman and the children and said, Who are those with thee? And he said, Children which God had grace, graciously given thy servant. Then the handmaidens came near, they and their children, and sobbed. Thousands. 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 Yeah, I am. And Leah also with her children came near and bowed themselves. And after came Joseph near and Rachel and he bowed themselves. And he said, What meanest thou by all this drove which I met? And he said, these are to find grace in the sight of my Lord. And Isa said, I have enough, my brother, keep that thou hast out to thyself. And Jacob said, Nay, I pray thee, if now I have found grace, thy sight, then receive my presence at my hand, for therefore I have seen my thy face, as thou hast seen the face of God, and thou was pleased with them, with me. Take, I pray thee, my bless, my blessing that brought to thee, because God had had, had dealt graciously with me, and because I have enough, and he argued him, and he took it. He urged him. He urged him. Oh, sorry. Um, okay. Um, so, what happened when they met? Like, what was I was happy to see him. He thought he was going to kill him, right? And also he came with like 400 men. So he probably thought, oh my gosh, he's going to kill us. If you were Esau, how might you feel about Jacob's effort to establish a peaceful relationship with you? Well, if you were excited to see your brother and be kissing that you'd be happy about it. Mm -hmm. what, did, what did Jacob do to try to make it, to try to establish peace between them? Remember, he should really talk about this. Hey, you remember what he did? He gave him, like, part of what he Yeah, did. he gave him a gift of, like, 20 cows and a bunch of sheep and lamb. <coughs> right now. I want to like read this quote from Marion D. Hicks. What is our response when we are offended, misunderstood, unfairly or unkindly treated, or sinned against, made an offender of, for a word, falsely accused, passed over, hurt by those we love, our offerings rejected? Do we resent, become bitter, hold a grudge? Or do we resolve the problem if we can forgive and rid ourselves of the burden? The nature of our response to such situations may well determine the nature and quality of our lives here and eternally. Even if it appears that another may be deserving 
of our resentment or hatred. None of us can afford to pay the price of resenting or hating because of what it does to us. What can we do to overcome hatred and forgive others? George, what do you think? What can you do to overcome hatred and forgive others? Like, were you ever <coughs> angry at Liz or Ricky for doing something? Really? You've never had good manners. Why you have no manners? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> what did you eat? Like two donuts at once? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to bulk. So how do you get? I bet there's nothing in there. Are so dumb. On McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> Esau then returned to the land of Seir. Um, hey you, can you read Genesis 33, 18 through 20? Genesis what? 33, 18 through 20. Okay. And Jacob came to Shalom, the city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan. He came when he came from Panera and pitched his tent before the city. And he bought a parcel of a field where he had spread his tent at the hand of the children of Hammer. Shechem's father for a hundred pieces of money and he erected there an altar and called it El Elohe's Did I say it right? Yeah. <coughs> um so the name of the altar, like that Jacob built, um, it's El God is the God of Israel. That's what it's like called. Um, by dedicating this altar, Jacob confirmed his promise that if God would help him return home in peace, then the Lord would be his God. So, we're going to talk about love and lust right now. So, <coughs> Ian, what are some, some differences between love and lust? <coughs> love is godly, lust is bodily, I guess. Alright then. Mm, let me know. Why is it important to know the difference between love and lust? Because... Um, a lot of times, people can think that when they're um, infatuated with someone, it can be love, but it's really not it's lust. <coughs> so, George, could you read Genesis chapter 34, verses 1 through 3? Okay. <laughs> you that? Wow. You're so oh, easy. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You guys might be doing something. 
Well, he was he was like, no, I'm done. I was like, I don't think you can eat one more. He's yeah, like, don't try me. And I was like, I just, I'm saying the truth. I don't think you can eat one more. And he's like, okay, so he's eating another one. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a serious part of the story that yeah. uh, we got to read. Yes, I'll open it. <laughs> chapter 34. 34. I can read it. Three. All right. What am I reading? Chapter, <laughs> chapter 34, the first three verses. Okay. Mm-hmm. And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamar the Hivet, prince of the country saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her. And his soul clave unto Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the damsel and spake kindly unto the damsel. Yeah, that's really weird. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, do you see evidence of love or lust? Lust. Lust. Well, a lot of people, like, when they think of, a lot of people say love at first sight. A lot of people say it's a lust at first sight. Probably because it's like. Well, what example do we have of, of love from Jacob and Rachel? What did he do before he. Well, he worked for he 14, 14 years. years. 14 yeah. years That's years. love. And then this guy just saw her and like said, I'm going to rape this girl. He raped her. <laughs> savage. It's so yeah. savage. It's disgusting. It's so savage. <laughs> what the heck? It's savage. It is savage. Though. Hey, am I right? Yeah, it is savage. Yeah, it's savage. This is ridiculous. So I'm going to read a quote from, it's from For the Strength of Youth. Love makes us instinctively reach out to God and other people. I'm oh, sorry, that was love. No. <laughs> All right. Love makes us instinctively reach out to God and other people. Lust, of the, on the other hand, is anything but godly and celebrates self-indulgence. Love comes with open hands and an open heart. You will. Lust comes with only an open appetite. Um, that was by Jeff Holland, and that's what we did our little exactly. Did you post it already? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so now we're going to summarize Genesis 34 to 31. Um, after Shem took Dinah and defiled her, Shem decided to marry her. Shem, father, approached Jacob and proposed that Dinah be allowed to marry Shem. He also suggested that their people engage in trade relations with each other and further intermarry. The sons of Jacob were angry about what Shechem had done and deceitfully suggested that they should agree to the proposed arrangement. Only if all the men in Shechem's city agreed to be circumcised, which was the symbolic entering into the Abrahamic covenant. The men agreed to this proposal and all were circumcised. While the men of the city were recovering from being circumcised, is that Simon? Simeon. Simeon and Levi entered the city, killed all the males, and rescued their sister Dinah from Shechem's house. Jacob was greatly distressed by what Simeon and Levi had done and was worried that surrounding tribes would gather to destroy his household. Although the outrage of Simeon and Levi may to some seem justified, receiving and slaughtering the men of the city was not justified. Um, ponder how lust, anger, and revenge can lead to immortal choices that result in regret and misery. And we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Also, we have a video. video.